In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built my paver pathway from the beginning to the end. And as soon as I was about to start this, Mother Nature gave me this rain and more rain. Once the rain cleared up, it was time to build the paver pathway. It took us about five weekends to finish this project between myself, my dad, and my son, the little helper. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment, put a like, subscribe if you want to see more videos. And now I will let you go ahead and watch the video. For this paver project, it's really important that you have the right material. Here you can see I'm laying the base, and the base consists of basically bluestone with fines. Uh, they call it a crusher run, and that's what I have here for the base. So it's important that you have a good base, that you compact it, and underneath the base you can see that I use the weed barrier, and I recommend that you use that as well. It's going to prevent some of those weeds. It's a cheap thing to do and it's really going to help out in the long run. Make sure you spend your time on the base because the base is very important. If you don't have a solid base, your pathway is not going to come out correctly. I did use some water just so I can tamp the base a little bit more. And then once this was done, I went ahead and used the tamper to manually tamp this down as much as I could. Now when doing this, this is a lot of hard work and I didn't think I was tamping it good enough because you really want this to be solid. Uh, this is where your pavers are going to sit. So I brought in the compactor and that's what we're going to use to tamp this and really make sure that our base is done correctly. On top of this base, we're going to have the paver sand and then the pavers themselves. So if you want your pathway to last a long time, this is a crucial step.
Once I have my base set, it's time to go ahead and start pouring in the sand, the paver sand. And I'm doing about one and a half to two inches of sand. And I'm just going to go ahead and evenly spread this on top of the base. And then I'm going to go ahead and set the pavers on top. Good job, Ophelia. Keep it going, bro. <laughs> because I had the tamper, I went ahead and tamped the paver sand as well. You kind of don't have to do this, but I think on this project, it actually helped me. And again, I have about one and a half to two inches of sand. I went ahead and tamped it down a little bit. And of course, when I work through this now and I stop putting the pavers on top, I might add or remove sand. There's various ways to go ahead and get your sand leveled and do all that. But uh, this is the way I did it and it worked out. As I mentioned earlier, this pathway is extending a previous pathway that I built. So I did use strings here to guide me along. So these strings are gonna make sure that I have the right width for the pathway, but also I have the right elevation going up to the new driveway because there is a little bit of an elevation, a little bit of an incline going to the new driveway. So these guides are gonna help me make sure I have the right width, that I'm level, and that I have the right elevation. And these strings were instrumental in making sure that this project came out right. Of course, if you're doing a small pathway, and you're not extending it, you can go ahead and just use a level. But if you go into a higher elevation, I suggest that you use the strings. You can see how I'm using the strings here to make sure I have the right width. And once in a while, you're going to see that I either add or remove sand from underneath the paver. And then I hit it with a mallet to make sure that it's nice and leveled, nice and straight. And that's what I'm doing here. So I'm just following that guide, making sure that my paver is nice and leveled. And once in a while, I'll either remove or add sand underneath it. You may have noticed that I'm doing the borders first. So I'm doing the right border and then the left border. And then I'm filling in the paver pathway with the rest of the pavers. I think it kind of works better this way. But you need to make sure that you know what your width is. This is where the strings come in. I have a string on either side and I'm staying within that string. And this method actually worked really well for me. Here you can see the crew that I have. My son is helping me as well as my dad. And again, it took us about five weekends to do this project. We did it slow, we did it right, and the end results look great because we took our time. This is the kind of project that if you do get somebody to come and do it, you're gonna spend thousands of dollars. The material itself that I have here for this pathway was about two grand, but if you have somebody doing the labor, it's gonna go up significantly. Watch out for his fingers. Okay, that's good. Oh, well. 
Once the borders were done, it's time to go ahead and fill in the pathway with the other pavers that I have. So the border is completely done. We're going to work in the middle now. And again, I did follow these guides. That's why you can see it's so straight. And laying out those strings really does help. Because my borders were straight, it's a lot easy to just fill it in. All I'm doing again is making sure those pavers are leveled and I'm adding or removing sand. Um, I am doing this in a random pattern. I'm not using a pattern whatsoever. So I knew exactly how my pavers were gonna fit there with inside the uh, borders and that's what I'm doing. Um, the width has already been decided for me. That's where the borders are and I'm just filling it inside there uh, again adding and removing sand i'm using a mallet just to pound it down i have a level where i check to make sure that it is leveled uh, from time to time and that nothing is wobbly uh, that there's enough sand underneath the paver and you can see i'm just going to go ahead and pound on it and make sure that it's straight So now that it's time for the edging, on one of the sides here I use a plastic edging with these plastic spikes. You'll see as the video progresses that I use mortar on the other side. I have used this plastic edging before and it really does help and I highly recommend it because it's going to prevent your pathway from shifting. And again, if you don't want to use this plastic uh, edging, you can go ahead and use mortar and watch the video because I'll show you how I use mortar on the other side. But for this side, I'm using the plastic edging. You really need to make sure that you have edging on there to hold all your pavers in place. When you work with pavers, there is going to be some times where you have to actually cut the paver to fit, especially towards the end or a corner, whatever it is. So when it comes to this, you have a couple options. I chose to use a masonry saw, and for me, this has been working great. So just be aware that you're going to have to cut some of these pavers. Prepare yourself on how you're going to do it. For me, the masonry saw is the way to go, and it works great. Once I cut the paver, I was actually able to make the edge 
look factory by just running the blade on it and I went ahead and make that sharp edge a little bit more subtle and it looked like it just came from the factory like that. So of course the less pavers that you have to cut and fit in place are always the worst ones and sometimes you need multiple tries like for this right here I probably cut this one a couple of times before I got it just right so don't be discouraged if you don't get it the first time. Here we can see that I'm almost at the finish line. I did go ahead and spray some water on it just so I can clean it off because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put polymetric sand and the polymetric sand is very important. That's what locks all the pavers together and prevents weeds from growing in the cracks. So polymetric sand, don't skip that step. It's going to be very important for this project as well. So on the other side of the pathway, I actually went ahead and used mortar for the edging. Uh, so this is going to hold the pavers in place and they're not going to slip and it's going to keep the pathway together. Because I happen to have a bag of mortar, I wanted to use that. But the reality is if you do it this way with a mortar on the edge, it's actually going to help your pathway stay together or your patio, whatever it is, better than the plastic edging. It's not saying that the plastic edging is not good because I use it. But this method works better and this is what the professionals do. They don't use the plastic edge and they'll actually use the mortar or cement or whatever they have to hold it in place. And then here we go with the polymetric sand. This is very important. This is going to fill those paver joints and make sure that uh, it locks all the pavers together. It's going to get activated by the water and this is a very important step. I'm just going to go ahead and sweep the polymetric sand right into the paver joints. And once I sweep it in there, I'm going to go ahead and compact this again. And when you compact this again with the polymetric sand, it's going to make sure that it falls into those joints and it gets there deep. Because after you compact it, you're going to spray it with water and that's going to activate it. And it's basically going to become like mortar on those joints, keeping the pathway, keeping the pavers together. So it's very important that you use the polymetric sand. Well, we're coming here to the end. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you find it useful and helpful. And I know you can do your project if you follow my video. It's easy to do. All you gotta do is put some effort into it. And you too can have a paver pathway that looks like this and saving yourself money by doing it yourself. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you on the next one.